We play and call it work. Vulcan lives. Hey everybody, Matthew here from AnyWarGaming.com and welcome to this Horus Heresy vlog. I believe we are in episode five, if I've kept track properly. And in this one, I am going to show you my 3000 point 30K Salamander's army. Now, I didn't paint any of these, which is great because that means they're actually painted well. It also means that there's a bit of a variety in the colors of green that were painted because we actually have a total of four different painting studios or painters that have contributed to this army, which I will go over in this video as well. And uh, I didn't know exactly what I wanted at first, and so they kind of each did their own thing. Now I have a better idea, and so there should be a little more uniformity. But it doesn't really bother me, because I have noticed that whenever we post pictures of anything 30K related, that no matter what color we've chosen, there's somebody who thinks it's not the right color, even if we've done our research and we think it's the right color. So there must be a variety of opinions on this, and uh, so I just, I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to enjoy the army the way it is. So this is 3,000 points. I am officially the first person to have an army done. Not that I can take credit for that, because like I said, I didn't paint any of it, whereas Quirk and Lee and uh, Steve are all busy trying to get theirs done. And Dave, of course, is having his painted up by Lee as well. So yeah, I'm going to go through what I have here, talk about why I chose this as my starting army, and then also talk about what I want to expand it to. I'd love all of your feedback and in terms of what I should take next, how I should play these, what tactics I should think of, especially if you're a 30K vet, or especially if you're a 30K salamanders vet, I would love to hear your advice of obvious holes in my army at this point, and just let me know what you think I should do in order to, I don't want to min-max, I don't want to try to cheese it out and get awesome, awesome armies, but I want to stay within the fluff. And like, for example, I, I've, I've been doing a lot of research and into seeing kind of the way that the salamanders wage war. And it seems to me that I shouldn't really bring land speeders or jet bikes. I know that they have access to them, but uh, somebody can point me in the right direction of fluff that would give me the reason to do it because I'd love to have land speeders because of the ability of salamanders alone, being able to kit them out with two heavy flamers. In 30K, you can't bring two heavy flamers on a land speeder, but the salamanders can replace any heavy bolter with a heavy flamer. And you can bring a heavy bolter and a heavy flamer on a, on a land speeder. So it'd be kind of fun to be able to do that. But it just seems a little bit against their, their fluffy way of playing. Of course, you can play it however you want, because in a legion the size of the old Space Marine legions, I guess there would be somebody who would have done it that way. Let's walk through exactly what we have here. Of course, our Lord of War choice is Vulcan. This was painted up by Awakened Realms. They did a fantastic fantastic job on them. This camera is not going to do this paint scheme justice. I would definitely recommend going to awakenrealms.com. They'll have a gallery of this guy, plus other gorgeous, gorgeous miniatures that they have painted up. And so he has definitely gotten the color scheme, or the, not the, sorry, the color quality, the painting quality that is uh, deserved by the Primarch of the 18th Legion. So he is just awesome. And then my most recent acquisition, which you probably just saw a video on not too long ago, was some miniatures painted up by, um, ooh, I gotta get all these names right now. I think it's the Armed Painter or Armed Miniature Painting Services. I'm gonna put all the links in the video description below for all the different artists. We've got some tacticals and the Pyre class, Fire Drakes, and one of the Rhinos as well. So essentially what I have right now are three squads of tactical Marines inside of Rhinos. So there's two more over here. These ones were painted along with these Praetors or Centurions, whatever you wanna field them as by uh, Ben from Demi Human Painting. Once again, link in the video description below. And so all the tactical squads, in 30K, you can't really give your tactical squads anything other than upgrading the sergeant. Uh, so you don't, it's the veteran squads that kind of act like the tactical squads from 40K. So they all just have bolters. And <clears throat> a couple of these squads are Mark, I think these ones are the Mark II power armor. And those ones over there are Mark III power armor. So they're not from the Betrayal Kelf box set. I will be getting more painted up from those because they're just so darn cheap. And then uh, we have a power sword, and I believe this is a hand flamer he has, but I'm gonna be treating it as an infernal pistol because salamanders have the option wherever their sergeants can take a plasma pistol, they can actually take a, an infernal pistol instead, which is a six inch range melta. And I like to do that just for the fluff purposes. And so they both, they both have that, one with the power ax, one with the power sword. And then the rhinos have the option for a heavy flamer, and because salamanders flamers, 
heavy flamers and hand flamers are plus one strength, I thought, yes, I should do that. So Lee, our painter, actually painted up these two rhinos and he converted up <coughs> the heavy flamers uh, because they don't actually take over one of the bolter sponsons because it's actually treated just as a twin link bolter. But he just took two flamers and stuck them together because uh, heavy flamers don't look the same as they did, uh, in, as they do in 40k. So they're just riding inside those rhinos. Now it does increase the points cost because in 30k they really uh, penalize you for bringing minimum squad sizes, which 10 is the minimum squad size for the troop, uh, for the tactical marines, which means you won't be able to bring these praetors inside of them with the, the rhinos, although you wouldn't be able to do the terminator anyways. Uh, and they, what they do is it's like, if I remember the points correctly, it's like 150 points for the first 10 and then 100 points for the next 10. Um, that's not going to be exactly it, I don't think. But that's essentially how they work. So if you try to bring a lot of minimum size squads, typically once you bring two or three of them, you could have almost brought another full size squad added onto those. But the problem is rhinos can still only hold 10. So the salamanders get minus one to their run and sweeping advance rolls and charge rolls as well, I believe. So they like to use vehicles to get them as close as possible because they are slow. And then the other tactical squad over here also has the guy with the hand flamer, which will be trained as an infernal pistol and a power sword. This rhino doesn't have the heavy flamer because that was the first one I had sent out. And by the time I re realized I wanted heavy flamers on them, he had already done it. But it's fine. We don't have to have it on every single one. And then, what else do we got? Well, like I said, we got the Pyro class. We got five of them so far with the Power Fist. So this is the Sergeant with the Power Fist. All these guys can be mel um, armed with melted bombs. The Pyro class are awesome. They are, uh, they are Artificer Armor guys, so they're two plus armor. And they have Twin Link Flamers. So Twin Link lets you reroll your to wound. But since they are salamanders, those flamers are strength five. They can also shoot them as meltas at range six. So you, they, they can't really go inside of a rhino. They can't choose a rhino as a dedicated transport. I guess they could get inside of one if they kicked the tactical marines out of theirs. They wouldn't, still wouldn't be able to start inside of it because it's dedicated. But turn one, they could hop inside of it. But they can take a land raider. So that is one of the additions I will be adding as a land raider. Mark II land raider. So the Protos, I believe. It's the one that's the assault vehicle, and I'm going to have five more um, pirate class added to the squad to max them up to ten. Stick them inside a land raider, then they can jump out, and they can either be anti-infantry with their twin link flamers, or they can actually be very effective anti-tank because they all have melta bombs. Whereas typically you can only give melta bombs to the sergeants. One thing I failed to mention is all sergeants, or all characters, I believe, in the Salamander's army can, for five points, upgrade one of their weapons to mastercrafted. Whereas most of their armies had to pay about 15 points for that. And so essentially in all these cases, either their close combat weapon or their Melta pistol will be um, Mastercrafted. I'm not quite sure which one I'd choose. Obviously for the Pyro class, it'll be as Power Fist because Mastercrafted on a Flamer does nothing. But it's kind of a cool upgrade option to be able to give all of them. <clears throat> and then of course, Leading down through the middle, we've got five Fire Drakes. Fire Drakes are the other unique squad to the Salamanders, Pyre class being the first one. And these are a Cataphraki Terminator, so two plus armor and four plus invulns, but slow and purposeful. And then the, when you buy the kit from Forge World, they come with a Thunderhammer Storm Shield, the Dragon Scale Storm Shield, and which is what I want to give them anyways, because they don't have the option for Lightning Claws. They do have options for all the other power weapons, but I don't really see the point of bringing any other power weapon than a thunder hammer because if you bring power swords, sure you're AP3 at initiative, but then you're only strength four. It's just, if they had lightning claws, then I would have five like this and then five with twin lightning claws. So the five of these up front to soak up the damage because the storm shield brings them up to three plus in Vuln, which is very powerful in 30k, unlike in 40k where you can get lots of storm shields everywhere. Storm shields are not as, um, common in 30k. I think the Salamanders and Imperial Fists that really have access to them. There might be other ones too. And then we have a Praetor here. This is a custom model that Lee made. One day I was just saying to him, I really want a Praetor with the Dragon Scale Storm Shield and the Mantle of the Fire Drake. This gives him Eternal Warrior. And I said, you could green stuff that up and convert it. He said, yep, I could do that. And I said, well, not a high priority because I already got these two Praetors over here. So whenever you get to it. The next day he comes in and gives me this, and uh, which is just awesome. It's, a, it's the Praetor from the Betrayal of Kelth. And then he actually made this shield from scratch, which in some ways I actually think is better than the ones that Forge World makes, although the Forge World ones are pretty darn awesome as well. 
And then he made this cape from scratch as well with green stuff. You can kind of see the base of it right there. And so that'll be a Praetor with Mastercrafted Thunder Hammer and the shield. So he'll be in cataphraki armor, so he'll be three up in one. He's basically just a fire drake, a souped up fire drake, because he's got the Praetor stat line rather than the fire drake stat line, so an extra wound and better weapon skill and all that. Of course, there's Vulcan too. These guys can all fit inside of the Spartan Assault Tank. Da, da, da. This isn't done yet. Lee's got to still add some iconography to it. We were waiting for, like, we can actually pop these doors off because, well, we can. Just trust me. We were waiting for the salamander-specific doors and uh, the front, and so he's going to stick that on the front here and then replace the side ones as well. And so that'll have the, the nice fire drake stuff, or the, sorry, the salamander um, chapter emblem on that just to really finish it off. I think he did a great job with the flame scheme as well. You can see how he's added, he even added it onto the the rhino, because when you buy the, I bought the rhino shields and doors, and I, or front and doors, and I didn't read it closely to realize that it only works on the rhinos from uh, Games Workshop, but he still found a way to use it just by kind of cutting them up and popping them on here, and then he added some flame stuff. The flames are different on each one. This one has the flames right here, this one has it right here. I am going to be adding a support squad of 10 guys with flamers, and uh, that is a troop choice, and they're kind of going to be, they'll be kind of like a, a cheaper pyro class squad, and they can take a rhino, so they'll all jump inside of this one because it's got flames on the top. They all jump out 10 of them with flamers. That'll all be strength five flamers, which will be awesome. Really, really awesome. And then up here, we've got a Predator in Furnace. So this has two options. It can have a Flamestorm Cannon, which is your strength six AP three, or the Magna Melta. I think I got that right. This is the Magna Melta. The Magna Melta is awesome. It's strength eight AP one Melta, large blast. And then put heavy flamers on the side and uh, give him machine spirit so that he can move 12 inches and still fire the magnum elsa. And then when he gets close, he'll have the heavy flamers to help out as well. And if not, they're there just to kind of take the weapon destroyed results. And so that one I'm pretty excited for. And last but not least, the Contemptor. This is the Salamander's Contemptor Dreadnought that you get from Forge World, not the one from Betrayal Kelth, so it is awesome. The one from Betrayal Kelth is okay, but this one is just, oh. Is just gorgeous. Also painted by the armed painter. So that was with the, the same one as the fire, oh sorry. Yeah, the one with the fire drakes and the pyro class. And the one tactical squad and the one rhino that was done by him. And so this, this oh, just spectacular job. Magnetize the weapons so we have some options. So there's more back there and I'm probably gonna get Lee to do some even more options so I just have everything I need. And we'll, we'll make sure we magnetize all the dreadnoughts the same way so that they can share weapons if we need to. And so like right now it's just got the multi melta and then a flamer inside of his fist, which is not a bad combo. Gives him a bit of anti-tank and then of course that heavy flamer will be strength six, thanks to him being a salamander. As in like in 40K, it's everything that attachment, not just things with chapter tactics. And so it actually includes the vehicles. And this does actually fit in the theme of their right of war, the Covenant of Fire, I believe it's called which allows them to bring, or what's, what does it do? It allows them to bring pyro classes, troop choices. It gives all their vehicles five up involves against Meltas, and I think Plasma as well, and I think against the Volkite stuff. Uh, so basically it makes their vehicles that much more survivable. He gives the Spartan Assault Tank armor, Ceramite, and a Flare Shield. The Flare, the flare Shield gives his front armor higher protection against blasts and against other shooting attacks. Basically it makes the thing almost totally indestructible at a distance. And then it'll have the five up invuln, thanks to the right as well. And so the restrictions of the right is that you can't deep strike anything, which is fine for this army, and that you can only have one console, that is the Centurion upgrades. And right now I've got a Praetor, I can have this guy as a Praetor, I can really make these Centurions or Praetors. Now they are modeled with the Paragon Blade, which is the plus one strength AP2 at initiative. Murderous strike, so it's a sixes roll to wound are instant death, but you could treat it as a power sword as well. He's an artificer armor and he's in cataphraki armor. So really how you want to do it um, is, is up to you. So this is 3,000 points. Now that is with three HQ slots and a Lord of War and fire drake. So there's, there's a lot of points invested in just a few guys. Even the pyro class, that's a 200 point squad just for the five of them. And they're not overly survivable. Like they have two up armor, but that's about it. Whereas the fire drakes have two up, three up, and two wounds each. So you need a strength eight to insta-kill them, and they'll be 
riding in a Spartan, so they'll be well protected until they get into close combat. So what I want to add next, five more Pyroclasts, a Land Raider to, uh, to take them in. I want to add a support squad of 10 guys with flamers. Uh, I want to add another Dreadnought or two, and thanks to the Betrayal Kelth, we've got tons of those. We ordered about a dozen of those boxes. I want to add the Sicarian. Actually, I already have painters now. Just ordered them yesterday and today. Working on a Sicarian Venator. 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 <laughs> Sorry. It's, a, it's basically the Sicarian tank that has the big laser destroyer, I think it's called, or the neutron laser. It's, it's, a, it's an anti-tank vehicle, basically. And also the, the Kystis or Cestus assault ram. That's the flyer with the two kind of boarding things. Kind of looks like the Space Wolf one, but with two of them. And that thing looks awesome. And so it can deliver, it actually holds 10 guys, and that, that can be 10 Terminators or 10 non-Terminators. Uh, basically counts um, Terminators as one model each. So it could deliver uh, Terminators. I want to add Breachers just because it kind of follows the fluff, even though they're not going to add that much strength to my army. And then maybe some like uh, gunships as well. More than five more fire drakes as well. And then some more cataphracty terminators, just regular terminators with lightning claws, just because I think that would really help to round things out. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, already have, already ordered the more fire drakes, already have more pyro class being worked on in the support guys. And what else do I have? I have this, the assault ram, the there was three tanks I was doing. There's the Assault Ram, the Sakaran Venator, and one other thing that I am now having a hard time remembering what it was. Oh, it doesn't matter. And so we got lots to add still. Want to get this up to uh, another two or 3,000 points, maybe even more than that. Because in 30K, like this is 3,000 points. It's not that much. In, in 40K, 3,000 points, you could bring a lot more. So almost everything in 30K is uh, elite in a sense, just by how many points they cost or you have to bring them in big blobs just to bring down the points cost. Okay, so this vlog is getting long enough. The last thing I want to just mention is that I am planning on building a solar auxilia army. I've fallen in love with the stuff for that. It's just a, it's a, it's a nice secondary army and it really works well with the, the salamanders as well as allies. And I could play them as traitor or loyalist, so it's nice to have kind of that option. Because right now I'm the only loyalist army in the office and so we need obviously for everybody else's second army you're going to get them to do a loyalist one but that could take another who knows how long two or three months before they they even get started on that so we need to have those options so you will see battle reports soon i'm not I, I have tons of ideas for it i've got excuses in the salamander fluff to actually do 30k versus some xenos races um, definitely eldar and dark eldar orcs can be definitely on that list chaos obviously um, even some excuses for Necrons, even Tyranids. Tau are the hardest one if you're like actually using them as Tau, but you could just use them as any other technologically advanced race and just use the Tau rules for it. Well, obviously we're going to have to make sure we're very careful for balancing things with 30k versus 40k. Doesn't work incredibly well for balance unless both players are really willing to, to work together to create a, a shared experience there. And so that usually means dumbing down the 40k stuff more than it means um, dumbing down the 30k stuff. So it should be a lot of fun, should have lots of different variety of stuff coming up soon. Just stay tuned for more Horus Heresy stuff. Thanks for watching and happy wargaming.